Hey, this is Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we're going to show you how to bolt on a plug and play video transmitter for your e machine wizard. And when they go down like that, sometimes the antennas will break. So I thought that was yours. You just broke a new one. All right, we're going to restart. This. With the new antenna system here coming down, you're not going to break your VTX off. Yep, no soldering, guys. This is a VTX upgrade to go from the crappy dip switches to an LED display to where it's easy to change your channels without having to pull out a chart and look at it and it's upside down or right side up um, and guessing what channel you're on. Now you can actually see what channel you're on with the display. All right, so stay tuned for the video. We're gonna show you how to do the hardware. We're gonna show you how to bind it up or get the same channel on the EV800. And we got a little teaser at the end. No more dip switches, ditch the dip switch. So here we have the stock one. All the stress is on the antenna. Yeah. This one, look how much lower. I mean, I'm able to press it flat and I'm not breaking the yeah, antenna. Look at the antenna right there. Even though it's bent up, the antenna flexes. Right. What's first step? All right, so you got your wizard here. Everything's fine, Danny. You've been flying it. Well, crashes are bound to happen, right? And when they go down like that, sometimes the antennas will break. Sometimes, every time for me. <laughs> Say you're flying, you flip it, you crash it, it comes down, it hits hard. Your antenna gets bent. Well. Everything looks fine dandy, but you go to it, next thing you know, your VTX is broken right here. Let's pull this thing out and dissect it. On there really tight. So, all right, that's screwing screws. We cut the zip tie off, the zip tie's gone. You just push it out there, feed it out. Now you got the little plug here. This is whole, oh, mine's actually broken from crashing. Honestly, we're gonna dip, dip the dip switches. We're <laughs> gonna ditch them. Um, they're, these things suck. I hate dip switches with a passion. Um, I don't know why we're still using these. It's 2017. 2017! Here, uh, well, we got two flavors for a really quick plug-in option. Plug-in, I like plug-in. So no soldering. No soldering. We got a 200 milliwatt and a 600 milliwatt option. So you can pick your flavor. So what are the advantages, well, I mean, other than the obvious? They being... look similar, right? Yeah. Dip switch, LEDs. Why would I choose a 200 or a 600? What? Uh, the factory is 200. Okay. But if you're wouldn't... flying with other people, 200 milliwatt, probably better choice. 25 milliwatt for racing is what you're supposed to use. Um, if you're flying out by yourself and all that, 600 milliwatt's fine. If you're flying around a lot of metal and smaller areas, stay with the 200 or even 25 milliwatt. Um, 600 milliwatt will get more noise if you're in a, like a right. building or something like that. So contrary to what you believe, 600 watt is not going to be better. Not always. Not always. Um, I mean, it is more powerful, but if there's a lot more uh, RF bouncing around stuff like that, it's it's going to be worse. Right. But let's go with the 200 milliwatt. I'm going to go with the, basically the factory replacement. Because you go fly with your brother and me and everybody else. Yep. So you're going to go. So we always use 200 here, except for me. All right. So we got the new one here. We got the old plug. So all we're going to do is plug this guy in, and it's going to go in this way here direct plug in all the wires are the same now you will notice that we do not no longer have that 90 degree uh, i'd rather not have that 90 degree i'd rather have the antenna come out the back because it's a little bit easier and when you're crash upside down you're not yeah. going to have that antenna exposed. Right, so we got that plugged in here uh -huh. next step i am actually going to use a different antenna the factory antenna is okay if it's vertical it's out the side out the back it probably won't matter as much but you get a little probably a little more noise we're gonna since we're upgrading anyway we're gonna go with the amway antenna this one has the new cap on it we're gonna put the cap on so it. you have to hear it click let's see oh these are there tight yep has to click all right so we got that one in got a circular polarized this is a right hand but essentially the idea is to get it, it up, mounted yep. up so that's a flexible antenna right yeah and it holds its position um radio's on we're gonna plug in the quad <laughs> to change your channels there's a button right here hold on one sec all right guys, i see Changing channels, you just push and tap the button. Yep. So there's eight different channels. Now to change your band, push and hold it for about two seconds or so. Yep. F. Now it goes F. We can cycle through all the bands there available. So I want to put it on F. And then I'm going to push and hold it for about two seconds again. And now it's back to channel. So I can cycle through the channels. Awesome. So no more dip switches. No more no guessing. No more dip switches. No more guessing your channels. It's right there. It does come with a little sheet with the chart yep. on it. Here, me and Will. This has already been broken, so it's a. Uh, this is this one's been through hell, guys. So to mount the antenna here, we're gonna we're gonna run a zip tie, and this is a little easier when the antenna or the VTX is not in it just yet. So you're gonna got those little two little holes on the either side of the uh, yeah. frame. Okay. All right. So. Basically, you're gonna to want to run a zip tie here. I wouldn't want to put the LED facing down so I can see the channel easier. Yeah, I'm just gonna. 
what he said what he's saying there is led yeah it'd be nice to be able to see that from the top but remember guys when you crash it generally pushes down or up if it pushes down it could crack some of the, the diodes on the mm -hmm. board so your best bet like basil saying is to run the vtx with the heat sink up mm -hmm. front one goes back on yeah the front one might be easier to do first it yeah. just depends on the zip ties you guys have these are a little shorter so these are just some leftover stock zip ties from the wizard now i got both zip ties in but i don't have either one tight yet so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn it upside down and i want to get that lined up to where the button's fairly far back so it's accessible right yes and use the ones that come with the wizard because they're light that way in a hard crash it will break away so it doesn't it's less likely to damage anything uh, okay. a stronger zip tie will hold tighter but it can also more likely to break something gotcha. um but just zip tying them up like that and cut the zip ties now we got an aftermarket vtx with led display the button's pretty accessible right here yep um led is visible but still protected on the bottom mm -hmm. and we and have heat no, sink up where it's going to get cooling no soldering no soldering modification now we got an upgraded 200 milliwatt vtx with an amway antenna and we're making use of the spot that was actually yep. broken prior. Right, yep, look at that. Or if you want, if you want to, you go to the 600. Yep. The same footprint. Say I'm a, I'm a first timer to this stuff, I have no idea what this means. How do I get my goggles and my brand new upgraded VTX on the same channel? What do I well, do? Well, in this case, um, we're gonna go with a known band frequency. The F is Fat Shark Band. Um, you get channel one through eight here. So I simply just put that on F1 and then put this on F1? Yeah. Can't be that easy. On this particular one now, sometimes the bands will be different, but in this case we got, we're going to cycle through, we're going to go to F, and then we're going to go to 1. Let me take my camera cap off here. Oh my gosh! I put that on F1, and put that on F1. Yeah, now with the EV800, you just hit the search, but make sure, um, sometimes they pick up on other channels because they can bleed over on other channels. Yeah. Um, if it's on F band, make sure it's pulling up on the F. Now, again, keep inside... Keep in mind the numbers, some VTXs, F might actually be E and E might be A or something like that. Um, just look at the numbers. The numbers don't gotcha. lie. But if I'm using the same brand, I pretty much can say they're going to be the same. For the most part, it'll right. line up. Yeah, the e right. um seems to be straight right. straight up. So I put this on F1, right? Just yeah. go over it real quick. And I put this on F1. Yeah. And that was So let's say this on 4. This is on F4. F band 4 right F4. now. Um, I'm just gonna change the channel and you should see it in the corner. F3, yeah, so you go back to F3. F4? Go back to, yeah. So, so if we're on a close channel, so F3. you see that's F5. Let's go back to F3. F3, yeah, I mean, it's getting close. Now, here, keep in mind though, I'll, let me search this real quick. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I bet you I can get the pull up on a similar channel. Now, that being said, guys, remember, um, I'm on Fat Shark 4, but if you look here, Race Band 5. And now if we look at the chart here, race band five is 5806. Mm -hmm. What's Fat Shark 4? Fat Shark 4 is 5800. Yeah, See how so close that yeah. is? And so, so because it's close, it's picking up. Now, even though it looks good here, when you start flying out, you'll get more noise. So because you have the right, no, uh, it looks good here, double check your charts. The charts that come with your video transmitter um, and your receiver or goggles, um, make sure you get the right channel number because right. that's ultimately what right. matters. Hey, Will, so I noticed your video display is kind of yellowish. Why? Yeah, um, yeah, that's just because I got a run cam owl on this thing. Oh, and she upgraded it's set your... up for night fly right now. So I was actually flying in the neighborhood about 11 o'clock at night last night. Wow. So you have an upgraded, upgraded camera? Yeah. You're hiding from us? Maybe. Guys, I get a lot of guys that ask me for the, this is my wizard right here. It's been through everything. It's done a lot, a lot of flights. Um, it's really been pushed to its limits. Um, the camera, the only thing, a lot of guys, well, what did you do to your wizard? I upgraded the camera on mine. I do a lot of evening flying, late in the day flying, so I actually have an Owl Plus in mine. Um, as you can see, we just changed the VTX to the 200 milliwatt LED. Um, I just put that back in for the video. And another thing I've done to it is Dow props. The stock props, they'll get you going. I don't recommend getting Dow right off the bat or putting them on right off the bat. It comes with 20 props. Might as well use those up. Um, the Dow props are a lot stronger, so if you crash, you're more likely to damage a motor, stuff like that. Um, but once you get the crashing out of the way, you're, you're good to go. Uh, the stock props, they'll get you going, but they're not as good as the Dow prop. The 5040 V2 from Dow uh, is an excellent prop for these things. They work amazing. They're very smooth. They're great strength to them. You're less likely to break them, stuff like that. Um, so you can hit branches and keep going if it happens. 
All right, well, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and that little bell because we do have some things behind the scenes going on to make this an awesome, even awesomer upgrade. Camera, we already did the VTX, uh, possibly receiver, just a couple other tips and tricks for future upgrades for your wizard down the road. Right, so be sure to subscribe and like and throw some comments. What do you think about the wizard? Any more upgrades you want us to see for us to do? All right, subscribe and thanks for watching.